Hi students, in this video we are going to look at the different types of data, what they are and how they're used. So after watching this video you should be able to define the two different types of data, the main two types, that's categorical and numerical. And you should also be able to define and identify data from the four subsets of the, from those two main types. Those four subsets are nominal, ordinal, discrete and continuous data. Right, so when collecting and analyzing data, it's important to actually know well what type of data are we actually collecting? Are we looking for descriptions? Are we looking for the number of items? Are we looking for uh, measurements and measuring how uh, the length or width or whatever it might be? We need to know what sort of data we're collecting. That tells us something about how we can collect our data. It also tells us about how we use it, how we apply it and also how we can display it in a way that's meaningful and understandable. So in terms of knowing our, what type of data we're collecting, it's important to know, well, what are the main types of data? So data comes into in two broad forms. The first one's called categorical. So categorical data uses categories or ideas to sort and organize data. So we're looking here for descriptions for the most part. So things like um, the colour of cars that go through an intersection um, would be an example of categorical data because you're looking for data about colours, words, descriptions, categories. Um, numerical data <clears throat> is where you're looking for data that's numbers, right? So you're counting something or you're measuring something and the, num and the data you need are numbers. So for example, if you're counting the number of cars that go through an intersection, that's numerical data because it involves numbers, it involves you counting. And the data being, well, how many cars came through the intersection. Now two main types of data, categorical and numerical, can be split into two uh, different subsets of data each. So categorical data can be split into what's called ordinal data or nominal data. Now ordinal data means that there's some sort of order to the data you're collecting. So for example, you might be doing a survey and asking people whether they strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree to some statement or idea. That would be ordinal data because there's an order to those statements between strongly agree and strongly disagree. That's ordinal, there's some sort of order to those descriptions and categories. Nominal data would be like the car colours in the car park. There's no order between red, blue, green. You can put them in whatever order you want. It doesn't really change your data. There's no sense of order there. Then secondly, numerical data can be discrete or continuous. Now discrete data includes only some sets of values. So for example, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sorry, let's think about you're counting the number of cars that are going through an intersection. You can count one, two, three, four, five, 10, 20 cars going through an intersection. You can't count 20.5 cars going through an intersection. That number doesn't make sense. You can't count 28.34 cars going through an intersection. In this situation, decimal numbers don't make sense. Now, because we've got some numbers that don't make sense, usually because of like a decimal value or something like that, we call our data discrete. Usually most data we count, that would be discrete. Continuous data means that we could have any value in a given range and that can work for our data. So for example, um, let's say we're measuring the length of time taken for um, someone to eat a meal that they could take five minutes to eat their meal, they could take 10 minutes, but they could also take 10 minutes and 30 seconds, or 10 minutes 31 sec and 31.28576 seconds, depending on how precise you want it to be. So we could make our number more and more precise by adding more and more decimal places, and our number still makes sense, we can still use it. So that's the difference between discrete data, it's a bit like counting, and some data which is continuous, which means you're measuring it. It could be almost any value depending on how precise you want to be. 
Right, so let's do some work to, uh, talking about the difference um, and doing some examples, working out what kind of data we're looking at. So we've got a furniture store and they, uh, they ask their customers to rate their customer service using the ratings very good, good, okay, and bad. Well, first of all, uh, we're not looking for numbers. So our data isn't numbers, it's these categories. So this data is categorical because we can't see any numbers there. Now, the question we ask next is, well, is there any order to these categories? If we mix up the order of those words, would it seem a bit confusing? And the answer is, well, yes, there is an order to the data. There's very good at the top and not good or bad at the very end. Then in between, you've got good and okay. So there is an order to the data. So that means our data is ordinal. All right, let's do the next one. So the length of time each customer spends in the furniture store. So the length of time, well, that'll be a number, right? It could be two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. So it's definitely numerical. <clears throat> now, our next question is, is it discrete or continuous? Could the time be any number in a given range? And the answer is yes, it could be a minute and two seconds. It could be a minute two, and then 2.5 seconds. It could be three minutes, eight, uh, three minutes, 42.83457 seconds. You can get as precise as you want, right? It could be any number um, within a given range. So we call that data continuous. And then finally, the amount of money spent by customers in a furniture store. Once again, the amount of money, that'll be numerical. And the data there, well, is it discrete or continuous? Well, in this case, there are some numbers that can't be spent in a furniture store. So for example, you can't spend $72.35.7. That number doesn't make sense. And as soon as we have some numbers that don't really make sense, we talk about that being discrete. Okay, or some numbers that we can't use in a given range, that means we've got some discrete data there. Right, so after watching this video, you should be able to define the two different types of data, categorical and numerical, and then define the four different subsets of data, nominal, ordinal, discrete, and continuous.